but we're going to start by talking about a crime that happens every day probably right under your nose it's a serious crime that takes advantage of the most vulnerable men women and children in our society and it's on the rise yeah thankfully there are some people who are prepared to take action and it's not the sort of people you might expect as louise holland has discovered in her spare time, 69-year-old retired teacher Norrie Webb works for the Salvation Army, but she's no ordinary volunteer. I'm a little bit apprehensive, don't know what I'm going into each time, but because I've done quite a number of these, I have a, a plan. She's not on her way to rattle a collecting tin or even help the elderly or lonely. Remarkably, Norrie works on the front line in the fight against modern slavery and human trafficking, following up on calls made to a Salvation Army helpline. Today, she's visiting someone who doctors became suspicious about after he collapsed in the street and claims to have escaped his trafficker. I'm about to just go into the hospital to see a young Vietnamese gentleman. I don't know very much about him at all. So it will be interesting to see in this particular case what has happened and then give him some kind of hope for the future. The Salvation Army has now responded to thousands of people who've been caught up in this very modern crime. Over the past five years, the number of people they've supported has more than quadrupled, many forced to work for criminal gangs. This story by a victim from Slovakia is typical of the experiences that they're being told about. He acted like caring men and he promised me a job and a new life. I'm working for car wash and rice factory, meat factory, everywhere. Every day I say him with other people. He know about my family. Every night I think of my child. The Home Office estimates there are around 13,000 people trapped in modern slavery in the UK. But anti-slavery groups believe that number to be much higher. And now charities are turning more to volunteers in order to help identify potential victims. Today, I'm out with another charity, Croydon Community Against Trafficking. Duncan, a former aid worker, investigates people working in everyday jobs who may be at risk. So that's the nail bar. Right. The hotel's just here on the left that yeah. we're worried about. Straight opposite is the car wash, so okay. that, that's so where we're, we're heading. Now. We'll go in there. We think people are hidden in plain sight when we're having our car washed or our nails done or ordering a takeaway. Those things are right in front of our eyes. How do you know when someone has actually been trafficked and when they're just working in terrible conditions? Well, both are crimes. Um, but if you're having your car washed for £5 and there's six people working on it, often in horrible conditions without protective equipment, we start to become suspicious where the cash is handed to one person who's in charge of the money. Duncan has brought me to a car wash he has major concerns about. It's a cold day. They're getting wet as they wash. They're not wearing wellies or waterproof trousers. They're in kind of normal jogging pants and hoodies. Some of the guys live on site and that makes us really nervous because it doesn't look a very habitable place. Whilst the car wash is going on, a sports car pulls up and two men get out. The longer this process has gone on, the more worried I've been. So they arrived in that black Audi. So there's some money going here and it's not made from £6 a car wash yeah. by paying your people well. How do you feel when you know that the figures are going up and up? Mm. I think what we can do is we can understand that getting a cheap price uh, for something, for a service, doesn't necessarily mean it's a great deal because someone is suffering behind that and we need to have our eyes open. For victims, contacting organisations like Duncan's and the Salvation Army can be difficult but may result in them gaining their freedom. Trafficker left for a few days and I was alone. Every day, wait, wait. Yes, I go. I got help calling Salvation Army. She asked me, how are you? My answer was, now it's good. Back at the hospital, and Norrie spent the past hour speaking to the latest victim of trafficking. He was a young Vietnamese man who was actually initially brought here as a child on a false promise of a better life. He was transported by plane and then overland, which is a common route. He was taken to a house where he was kept in the basement. Food was only brought to him three or four times a week, so, and he slept on the floor. He has been in a, a dreadful situation. 
which no human being should be in. Norrie will now write up a report and it will be sent to the National Crime Agency. They will then decide if they believe he could be a victim of modern slavery and whether he's entitled to Salvation Army support. He actually was smiling when I left. That means a lot to see a smile on the face of a victim. You feel you have made some difference.